Hi, everyone. Thank you for your patience. We had a couple of technical um, issues to, to work out. Uh, if you are looking for the struggle for hope, Pasha Mansir's efforts to help rebuild the lives of Ukraine's refugees, you're in the right place. Uh, I'm just going to stall for a moment or two while we wait for um, things to get going on Facebook Live as well. Um, and once I get the signal, we'll get going. But in the meantime, I think I can start introducing uh, what's going on here today. Uh, so um, hi to everyone in the US, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, other places in the world, especially Liberty New York, where uh, I know a whole bunch of Madrachim are watching. Uh, welcome to the latest in Partners for Progressive Israel webinar series. Um, my name is Ron Skolnick. I organize these webinars on behalf of Partners for Progressive Israel. Um, before I hand things over to the panelists, I'll just um, a few notes. Uh, Partners for Progressive Israel is an American not for profit dedicated to the achievement of a durable and just peace between Israel and its neighbors, which includes an end to Israel's uh, 55 year occupation based on a two state solution. Partners supports Israelis working to ensure social justice, civil rights, equality, and Jewish Arab partnerships. And it seeks to deepen Americans' understanding of Israel's and Palestine's complexities so that they can better advocate for a progressive future for all the inhabitants of the region. Um, today's um, webinar topic is a little bit of a, uh, a deviation for partners, but it's an issue that the organization has spoken out on. Um, and so I was glad to be partnering with Hashem Eretzia USA and Hashem Eretzia World Movement on this. Uh, partners for Progressive Israel is glad to be bringing this webinar for free. If you enjoy it, uh, want to see more programming like it, please visit progressiveisrael.org and make a contribution. Um, a couple of quick notes about upcoming programming so you know what to look out for, uh, and then we'll get underway. Partners for Progressive Israel is soon going to be holding its annual Israel-Palestine Symposium, and it's going to be online again this year, uh, and it's going to take place over seven Sundays from October 23rd to December 18th. So please to keep, look a, a, keep a lookout on social media and in emails for additional details. Registration is going to be starting soon. On September 29th, uh, we might have some programming before that, but there'll be a webinar that will bring together representatives of two different approaches to an Israel-Palestine Confederation. And that is um, organizations known as a Land for All and the Holy Land Confederation. Um, so we're very pleased that should be a very exciting webinar. And again, registration details will be coming out um, probably after Labor Day. So um, with no further ado, let me introduce our panel in brief, and then I'll, I'll hand things over. Um, Anna Grachevskaya is the coordinator of Russian-speaking countries for the Hashem Eretzia World Movement. She also serves as projects coordinator for Ukraine, including Hashem Eretzia-run Children's Room, in the Refugee Center in, and I hope I get the name um, of the city correctly, Peshemeshel, Poland. Uh, in addition, um, she coordinates collection and dispatch of humanitarian aid and is the coordinator of the volunteer community within Ukraine. Vitaly Kozak is a graduate of Boguer of the Hashem branch, the Ken in Ukraine. He serves as coordinator of volunteer community within Ukraine and represents Hashem Lviv. And Western Ukraine. And last but not least, uh, Ori Shacham is an educator, youth, move, youth, <coughs> excuse me, youth movement member, and student. She's been part of Hashem Eretzia USA since she was 11 and currently serves as the youth movement's educational director. This year, he helped lead the Hashem Eretzia North America fundraising efforts for Yachad for Ukraine, Together for Ukraine and also took part, and he'll be mentioning additional details about that, and he also took part as a volunteer on the 11th delegation to the Hashem Children's Center in Poland. So with no further ado, let me hand things over to Ori. I'll be back at the end to just say thank you and wrap things up. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, Ron. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ori, as Ron said. Um, I'm Hashem Eretz Educational Director, and uh, it's an honor to be talking with you all. So big thank you to uh, Partners for Progressive Israel for helping make this possible. Um, I wanted to uh, start us out. Basically, I will give a recap a little bit of what we'll be talking about today. Um, we're going to give a little bit of context about what's going on in Ukraine currently. None of us are uh, political analysts or news reporters, but um, 
Vitaly is currently living in Ukraine. He's going to update us a little bit about what's been going on. And Anna, I have also been following closely, so we'll be talking briefly about that. Um, and then we wanted to actually talk about our youth movement and um, the work that we've been doing uh, since the war has started. Um, Hashem Eretz Seir is a uh, international Jewish youth movement. We have um, chapters in 27 countries around the world. Uh, I'm currently in our chapter in Liberty, New York. I'm at our summer camp and the room next to us, we have a, a big cheer from our, uh, here, I'll come show our major theme really quickly. Um, we have all our... Um, so uh, they are, uh, they're a wonderful group of educators and um, we provide uh, informal education for Jewish youth um, and I've been doing so uh, for, for the past hundred years in Europe and North America. Um, we're gonna be talking a little bit about our chapter in Ukraine, um, which is located centrally in Kharkiv and um, what the chapter was like before the war started and what's been going on since the war has happened. Um, then we're gonna talk in different parts about the response and uh, that we've had as a youth movement and um, the sort of central part of the talk that we want to uh, lead up to at the end is we're going to be talking a little bit about how we want to be involved going forward. Um, there is, uh, I think, a tendency with news cycles to, you know, you hear about something like the war in Ukraine, and I know in the Western news cycle is very, very central uh, for a few months, for the, for the first two months after it was happening, but then as the war kind of continues, a lot of other things become central in the news cycle, but it doesn't mean the war isn't still happening. It's still um, very much raging on and um, there's lots and lots of work to be done um, to help rebuild uh, the country. Um, so without further ado, I wanted just to start out um, with uh, Anna and Vitali. If you guys could just tell us a little bit more about yourselves and uh, what your involvement in Hashem Eretz has been. Um, growing up in this movement. Okay, hello, I will start. My name is Anna. Uh, I live in Israel and I'm a coordinator of Russian speaking countries of uh, Shemar Tsayyid. Uh, so we have our camps in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Georgia, and of course of Ukraine. And when uh, all this war starts, uh, we have a uh, uh, no opportunity to miss it. Of course, there are our guys, our kids, our chenichims, our children, their families, their friends, their life, and we start to help from the very first moment of this terrible situation. Yeah. And uh, I was born in Russia. So uh, in Russia, we have no uh, this stuff like uh, young's move, young, young movements, but when I uh, make a Liyah for Israel and make uh, people, uh, and uh, uh, when I met uh, guys from Shabbat Sair, I understood that this is my life. This is what I need to do uh, to, uh, to improve myself and to make this world better. Beautiful. Thanks, Anna. Um, and Vitaly, could you just tell us a little bit about, about yourself and sort of how you've been part of this uh, youth movement growing up? Oh, you're, you're on mute, Vitaly. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, my name is Vitaly. Uh, so I live in Lviv. It is uh, one of the western cities in Ukraine. Um, I've been a Shemar a year, I think, from my 13 years old. Uh, I took the activity parts, I think, till the 22, 23. Uh, I used to be the Roshkinim of Lviv, uh, Ken. Uh, I knew Oran personally when he came to Ukraine. Um, I was like kind of his own translator. So we got some uh, personal conversation. And when the world started, Oran asked me, if there is any help for uh, for me, for the guys here in Ukraine is needed. And in case that we was a region that most of refugees came first, we are trying, we was trying to help here. And after then we received some humanitarian from the European Hashemar the year came here in Lviv. And after then we 
send it to Eastern Ukraine, to Kharkiv, to Chernovty. Also, we were trying to make uh, directional help to the families that needed some first time goods, uh, food, or also we got like four families that we are helping with the uh, apartments to stay in Lviv for the time until they must or need to understand what to do next. So this the tasks that we was working from the beginning of the work till now. Right now, the situation with the food and oh, the first medical aid is more normal. It's only critical in the Kharkiv or in the cities that are just nearby to the battlefield. Uh, so this is what we do. Uh, in Lviv right now, situation is pretty normal. The life isn't changed um, so much for the beginning of the war. So you can go to your work, you can meet friends. There is some things, but if we are comparing to the other cities of Ukraine, it's very calm here in Lviv and mostly safety because uh, there is possibility of the airstrikes, but this possibility is all around the Ukraine, no matter where you are located. So comparing that you are in Ukraine, this is pretty safe. And there is social life and you can continue to do what you was doing before the war. That's for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Vitaly. Vitaly, can you, um, I wanted to, you started talking about this a little bit, but just wanted to, to ask if you could talk a little bit more about just giving us some background about what the situation today is like in terms of the war. Um, where where is the war more located? Um, what what are the big where are the big kind of battlefields and, and places that that it's um, happening? Uh, for now, for now, what is happening for the normal life, for example, from the side of the citizen of Lviv? Uh, you're not allowed to go out to leave your apartment from 11 o'clock uh, p.m. till the 6 a.m. You should stay at home. So it's like commandential hour. Uh, a lot of people are uh, um, men uh, from age from 18 till 60. You have no opportunity to leave the country. So you just uh, have to stay. and. A lot of people are um, going to the military forces also, not by their own, uh, not by their own, but, but they just forced to do to the uh, to the army. Um, it's for the for the so you just meet some guy from the army in the street and. He will give you the list to go to check in in the army place. Uh, about the battlefield, uh, right now it's pretty close on the uh, direction of Donetsk and Lugansk, eastern Ukraine, and also in uh, direction of Kherson. So it's more like Crimea. So from Kharkiv till Crimea, the old region, the Kherson, the old region where the uh, attack forces is battlefields are for the moment. But right now there is not such a movement straight or forward. So it's more like frozen for the latest months, we can uh, we can say. So uh, right now it's more like uh, um, airstrikes, battlefields, not by the soldiers, only by uh, outer, uh, only by missiles, missiles, cannons. So it's long distance fight, you may say like this. Uh, last for last month, there is there was no um, rocket strikes by the city, so it was in the military objects uh, in Ukraine, and it's pretty the same that you can see in the news the same information you can get here inside of Ukraine. So about the situation and what will be happening next, everybody waiting for more. Uh, soldiers to be trained and for more weapons to came you know, from America, from the Europe, and to escalate the fight to make uh, attack to the occupied territories. For the moment, it's like this. So life in the Western Ukraine and in Central Ukraine is pretty okay. 
uh, uh, the life is in the eastern Ukraine and the north it's like you're living in the battlefield. So it's really depends in which place of Ukraine you're located. Thank you. Ah, thanks. Thanks so much, Vitaly. Um, I wanted to, to move on for a second uh, to Anna to ask you a little bit um, specifically about uh, the Hashemar to Irkan in Ukraine and where where is it located? What um, can you tell just tell us a little bit more about um, the Ken and what it was like before uh, the war started. For, for those who don't know, uh, Ken uh, in Hebrew means it's kind of like a chapter. So it's our chapter of uh, the youth movement in Ukraine. It's our chapter, it's our nest. So our Hanihim, so that means it's our participants. It's like uh, our... <laughs> uh, as, uh, uh, what I need to say is that Ken of Ukraine, it's one of the oldest Russian speaking Kens. Uh, the history of Shamer Tsair, uh, I, when I, uh, I mean the history of 100, 110 years old, it was built in this area, this area of Ukraine, of Poland. No, you know, it was uh, uh, like the uh, same territory of, uh, in a lot of uh, Indian people. Uh, and uh, also, uh, of course, of course, on uh, time of Soviet Union, so there was uh, no opportunity to make a uh, uh, young movement in the Soviet Union. And in the 19th, Shomer Tsair started the camp in Ukraine. And so it was uh, really a lot of people, uh, a lot of participants. And we have camps in the uh, the biggest city of Ukraine, like Kharkov, Kiev, Lviv. Uh, 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 Dnipropetrovsk, uh, Chernovtsi, and another. So uh, uh, what I need to say is that our the biggest can, it located in the Kharkov and, uh, uh, and our Shlichimot, uh, so the um, uh, girls that were in charge and what uh, happens in Ukraine that also was in uh, Kharkov. And what uh, happens now with the city, it's, uh, oh my God, it uh, really breaks uh, uh, our head. And uh, uh, the uh, can of Ukraine, uh, it's not uh, like in uh, all uh, city, uh, in all, all, all over the world, because it's a can not for kids, not for teenagers. It's uh, now uh, mainly can for adults. That means uh, that the most of our participants that from uh, 17 till 30, uh, and there are a lot of agreements that people that uh, uh, left the can uh, of reason of the age, and I know that uh, they're still all together, they visit each other, they're talking to each other, and when the, start, uh, the war started, uh, they had a lot of chats so that, hey, how are you, how we can help uh, each other. Other. So they, uh, if you was uh, in a can of Shamar Tsair when you was uh, uh, 18, 20, 25, that means that uh, your life still in Shamar Tsair. So uh, a lot of uh, people that was in our can spread all over the Ukraine, all over the Europe, in America, in Canada, and uh, in other, other countries. Uh, it was a really a big, 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 big family. Uh, I think the uh think that uh can of ukraine proud at all it was a, a every year seminar uh it's uh named gaverla uh, then in the mountains of karpati every year in the end of may i think it's a beautiful time of year in Ukraine, uh, the white uh, flowers, the great weather, and uh, uh, every participant and him together make a, a four or five day seminars in the one of the wonderful places in the world. And uh, I know that our Hnihim, our participants waiting for each uh, uh, year and uh, we tried to make uh, this year 22 a uh, seminar of Gaverla want to uh, uh, other guys from Russian speaking camps wanted to join we tried to make it but in February we understood that it's impossible 
And uh, also I want to add a little bit, maybe emotional thing, thought uh, that I still cannot under understand that we are talking about uh, war is continuing for uh, half a year. When I started this work, I, I remember how it was. Okay, it's a week of war, how it can be. It's two weeks of war, it's a month of war, but now it's half on a year, we're still in the war. And the uh, situation, of course, it's changed, but we still don't know uh, to which side, but uh, trying to help in administration. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much. I wanted to uh, move on to uh, asking uh, you, Anna and Vitali, a little bit about the work that Asher Maritzer has been doing and that you guys have been doing uh, each since the war started um, to help uh, members of our Ken. But also uh, one of the things that I thought was really remarkable was that um, it was a very wide response to just anyone who needed help in the areas and not just not just members of Asher Maritzer. Um, so uh, if we could um, start out uh, with Vitali, if you could tell us a little bit about um, what you guys have been doing within Ukraine since the war started. Um, I know there were different forms of humanitarian aid and evacuations, and I wanted to hear a little bit uh, more from you. What, what work you guys have been doing since the war started and, and what work um, needs to be done now? Um, okay, so when the world started, the first uh, steps was to, as I told before, the mostly people from Ukraine came to the Western Ukraine, from the central part, from capital Kyiv, from Kharkiv, and other Eastern cities. Mostly people came to Lviv. So the first uh, things we was doing, we was trying to help people to find places to stay in, it was winter, so bring some warm things because many families just left their homes with no, uh, with no things for their life, only small bags. So the first things is what's connected to all the members of the Kharkiv Kinim, which is the biggest can in Ukraine, and all the old uh, showrooms that used to be in the movement for the um, different part of the time that Ashmer was in Ukraine. Uh, so. And we connected with the Orange, with the guys from the European Kinim. Uh, so first we received uh, the first humanitarian. It was bring directly by Orange. So I met him in the Polish border. Uh, so we started to send uh, this humanitarian to Kharkiv to some families directly where there was such a possibility started. So we just rent a big car and send it from Lviv to Kharkiv. Uh, it was the first steps that then we was trying to find some apartments for the long time period. So it was really hard to do because there was no possibility in the big cities of Western Ukraine because uh, there was too many people that was trying to came to Lviv or to through Lviv to Europe. So then there was a lot of people from also who was trying to get out of the country. So we helped them to move uh, to the Poland to first of mostly to the Poland because it is the easiest and the most close way for them to leave. Uh, it was the first first thing that we was doing. After the situation became more stabilized, so we we started to receive another humanitarian, and it was uh, there was a guy in, also from Pomeshamer, uh, German. He's from Kharkiv, so uh, we coordinated with him and we he started to work with the families that stayed in Kharkiv that not only left the city and we was sending the goods, the humanitarian to them. And after uh, we got the addresses of Hanahim, their families that are from Eastern Ukraine that left in the Eastern Ukraine that removed to the different countries to the Western Ukraine. And we're trying to send the goods to each of the family directly uh, a couple of times. There was a couple of cases when there was some medical healing was necessary to the person also by the funds that 
we get from the Hashemar Hatsir Bolvar movement. He was able to help financially with uh, medical. There was some also problems that uh, needed to um, that was needed uh, to bring some specialists also. So we was we can we could afford it and could uh, help the families to deal up with different tasks that was here on the place. So in the forest, for the moment, there is a guy from Kharkiv, the young boy, it's like 22 years old, and he got the problems uh, with the cross and the border to you, to the Poland. And right now they are working with the jurist to solve this problem also. So different cases, each case that we get, we were trying to help. There is some family, for example, from Israel, it's uh, father, mother, and young kid, like a couple of months, years old. So they're the civilians of Israel, but they cannot move to, from the border. So we also help them, trying to help to solve this problem with a different uh, communication from the laws and different stuff. Uh, for the moment, there is four apartments that are uh, rented for the uh, Shavrims from Kharkiv and their families uh, in Lviv. So we're trying to help them also. And this is mostly what was done. Uh, for the moment, I think the most necessary things is to help people uh, to continue to build their lives uh, because it's, pre it's pretty known that the war will not end in a month or in a two. And there will be autumn, there will be winter. Uh, and I think the most necessary things is to help financially and to help uh, people to get their opportunity to find a job, maybe to find a new specialization because there is a lot of uh, guys from Kharkiv, for example, with medical education that could not work anywhere in Europe or in Western Ukraine also because there is a too lot um, specialists of this way. Uh, so maybe some educational programs, maybe language programs, whatever that could give the opportunity for the people to start uh, making money in the new places that they're used to live in right now for the moment. So because it will be a long term conflict uh, and this, uh, this is the most point that we need to, um, to help with because uh, as I uh, told before, uh, men from 18 till 60 years are not allowed to leave the Ukraine. So, for example, uh, Hanehim from Ashamara Tsiyur can go to Israel, make Aliyah. And I saw the question yet, also the point of the movement here in Ukraine is to make Aliyah. When I was in the movement, we got like a slogan so that each Kenim works for its self-destruction because the main target is that all the members of Kenim should move to Israel. And it was our idea for that moment. I think it also list for now. Uh, but for example, if you're a man, you could not make Aliyah right now. So, you, And if you're from the Eastern Ukraine, you should find a new possibility to earn money to make a life for yourself because the government isn't good in this because there is too many people with the same problem. And I think as longer the war will continue, as the biggest problem will be financial help for the people and opportunity, for example, to work, maybe to work online, to get new speciality, maybe connected to IT cluster, whatever. So I think it will be the main problem and the main target for the closest time if we're talking about directly help for the Shabrim and the people connected to the youth movement in Ukraine. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vitaly. Um, we're going we're gonna, to um, talk for another 10 minutes or so, and then we're going to open it up to a Q&A. So if you have any um, questions, um, please uh, feel free to write them in the Q&A box, and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end. Um, just for those, I know that some people have different time constraints. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know um, if you would like to support our efforts, we will want to, we're going to be aiming to be building a children's center in Kharkiv in Ukraine, um, and uh, we'll need um, funds to be able to do it. Uh, 
any support um, is incredibly appreciated. I'm sending our um, donation link here in the chat. Um, it's a really central way um, to help support. And if you could share it with friends and family, um, that would also be amazing. So putting it here in the um, in the chat. Um, I'm just gonna, um, just quickly, Anna, if there's anything um, you would want to add on um, about, about our efforts, maybe sort of talking a little bit about our efforts for people that have already fled Ukraine or left Ukraine, and um, if you could talk a little bit about the work in Tesco in the in the Children's Center. Uh, yes, uh, Vitalik, thank you very much. Uh, what you talk to people, it's a really great job that you did, you, German, and our, our other coordination. I'm so pleasure you. I have no idea how we can solve all these problems without you. Uh, I remember that I called and text in the night. Oh, we have a family with a, a seven month uh, child that needs to diapers, that needs medicines, that needs now, now, now. Now, right now, please help. And everybody says, yes, OK, a couple of minutes happen. I will do it. Uh, so yes, uh, one of uh, type of our help was uh, 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 help for families, for our Hanichims, for each uh, 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 woman or man that asked or don't ask or somebody asked about help for for, for, uh, for a person help of course we haven't asked who are you uh, we only ask what you need where you are and how we can help you uh, and uh, we uh, our European kinims uh, uh, sent a lot of humanitarian aid to Ukraine so it was uh, food, it was medicines, it was diapers, it was uh, uh, all stuff that you need uh, every day and don't understand how you can live if you cannot receive it. But if uh, from uh, the start of war, the uh, shops were closed, uh, there are no goods, no stuff, nothing. Now the situation is really better. Uh, and as I know, uh, also in uh, in, uh, in Kharkov, but still uh, a lot of uh, uh, firstly medicines and the medical staff. Uh, you have a big, 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 big problems to receive. Uh, also, if you uh, have some special needs, and. Uh, as Vitalik said, there are problems with the areas where uh, that are occupied by Russia, like Donetsk, Lugansk, Kherson. Uh, and uh, this is one type what we help uh, in Ukraine. And I think the second type was the, was the coordination. Uh, because people have no idea what they need to do. On the uh, first month, first two months, uh, uh, you can uh, was very problems to leave uh, Kharkov. So uh, the roads was bombed, the roads was ruined, uh, Russian soldiers shot on your uh, can shot on your car, and people have no idea what they need to do, how they can. Uh, uh, take a bus to go away, how a train uh, worked and who can help them, uh, where they can find money, where they can find food, um, some doctors or something else. And uh, it was a lot of work uh, of our volunteers uh, that uh, we work uh, everybody together that would make a system of our volunteers. We'll work on telephone, work on uh, messenger, uh, telegram whatsapp doesn't matter to uh, answer for people's uh, questions how uh, they can leave their place how they can take what they need and uh, how they can become refugees and what there will be as their next steps in a new countries if uh, uh, they succeeded to leave the country uh, it was a lot of stuff story there. And uh, one of the project uh, of Shemar Sayir that really inspired uh, that in with this word is, yeah, we have problems, but with people, everything all right. It's a kindergarten, a children's place uh, in a border of Poland and uh, Ukraine. Uh, it was, uh, like I said, in Przemysl, uh, or you were there. Uh, it, 
it's not very big uh, Poland, uh, Polish uh, city, but uh, they make a big, big, big uh, uh, shop to, to a refugee center. And uh, when we came there, uh, it was like a post-apocalyptic movie. So uh, imagine uh, uh, hundreds of people, mostly women uh, with children, with disabled uh, parents, with their uh, animals, and uh, maybe one, uh, one luggage or one, uh, one backpack or something else, what they can took uh, from their past life. Uh, there are a lot of organizations and try to help them and we understood that uh, uh, a lot of children that uh, in the center they have no idea what they need to do of course it's they were very scared they were in shock they were in stress and uh, we make uh, a really nice place where they can be uh, in a little bit more comfortable uh, situation and live like uh, normal children to play, to draw, to dance, to, uh, I don't know, play football, make just dance, make some arts, craft, uh, some educational stuff. Uh, and uh, our volunteers uh, help them. Uh, there were uh, volunteers all over the world so from uh, Shemir Sair, uh, like from Brazil, from Europe, from Israel, of course, from uh, US. Say Canada, Australia, from all over all over the world. So of course, there are uh, people in that speak uh, speaks Russian and Ukraine and help with translation. But it was really, 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 really great. And I think it was the project that we can really proud of them. Uh, it and was I, I... a place where uh, we can hurt a love and uh, happy children, a lot of music, dance, and, and, uh, and other people came and look at it and start to dance, start, start to smile, and uh, with a, another thought, not, uh, oh, I'm a refugee, what I need to do in my life. I and can't. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. thank you, oh, sorry, sorry to cut you off. I'm just gonna cut you off for a second, just because we're so so short on time. Um, but um, I, I just wanted to, to say as well, um, First of all, Anna has been incredible. She's been coordinating all of our, our work, uh, um, both with Tesco and, and the Children's Center and a lot of our humanitarian work. And um, I, I also had the chance to go to the Children's Center. It is an um, incredible place. Um, there are volunteers from all over the world there. Um, and the different volunteers from different Jewish organizations that came created this really really like sort of slice of hope in, in a place that was, um, that's really hard. And uh, I, I was really struck by um, also the fact that I, a lot of the kids in the center when I was volunteering there ended up, they wanted to be volunteers. They would put on volunteer vests and they wanted to help run the center with us. And they would come at the beginning of the morning and stay there and late until the end of the afternoon or the evening. Um, even after we were supposed to close, they would wanted to stay in a I think for me, it kind of strengthened just the sense of, sense of how important it is for youth to have a space um, to be kids and to be youth during a time like this um, and to be able to hope and dream together and also just have a, a little bit of a place where they can just be kids again. Um, because, because I think that's something that's so, so lacking in a time like this. Um, I want to show a, a really quick video and then we'll just present our vision. This is a a video I, I took from um, the Children's Center in, in Shemeshel. Um, one of the great things we did every day there was we did this sort of parade around the camp and all the little kids would join and we'd play this um, Ukrainian pop song and uh, families in the area would come and start videoing it. And it's not a great quality video, but it was just my personal highlight from there. So I just wanted to, to share it really quickly. Um, and then we will talk about our vision just for the... Um, Is it sharing or no? Yes. Great. Okay.
Um, I know, uh, I know that's not the most sort of clear video. It's not the best quality, but I just, just a moment that was always really, really happy for me there. And, um, I think that just, just one thing I'll share is that a, a very strong sense I felt leaving, um, was both of, of, of the tragedy and, and, and the deep pain of what is happening right now, but also that there is a great space, um, of hope that we can build together. Um, as youth, as educators, um, providing space for youth to help um, create these spaces for themselves. And um, with that, I just wanted, Anna, if you could briefly share um, just in a few minutes so we can also get to our Q&A after this, if you could just briefly share our vision for what we want to be building in, um, in Kharkiv, in, inside of Ukraine, um, starting in September. Uh, thank you very much, Ori. Yes, I will try to be quickly, but uh, the main things. Uh, we understood uh, that, uh, as I said, the war is continuous, and everybody understood that, okay, it can be uh, the end is near, we don't know, but life is still continuing, we need to do something with our lives. Uh, so, um, when in the start of the war, war, a lot of people left uh, Kharkov because it was was a really big problems. Uh, you cannot live there. Syrian, Syrian, sirens, 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 and sirens. Uh, the sirens are still going uh, five, six, ten times uh, a day. Yes, uh, people need to, to go to the shelter, but. Uh, citizens uh, started to go back to Kharkov because uh, it's uh, need money to pay rent for, for to, in Ukraine, in Europe, in another stuff. Okay, you're a refugee, but uh, uh, you take some money and help, but this is not enough. And also you want to go home and rebuild your home, your place, your city, and uh, understand, okay, I'm Ukrainian, I need to be, I need to live in Ukraine and make my uh, country better. So uh, we, Shmar uh, Sair, want to start in Ukraine a special place uh we're deciding about a name but i think it will be uh something like uh, with the word hope on ukrainian uh, uh, uh i will update when uh, it will be the, our decision uh and uh, it will be a place for kids for teenagers and adults uh, first of all, it will be a safe place. Uh, what we have now, it's a real big place with a shelter uh, where kids can spend uh, their time uh, when their parents are uh, working, searching for work, will help for the city and something else. Because you need to know, to know that in Kharkov, they're not still, of course, it's the summer, but there was not school, regular school. It was like uh, the corona time, uh, everybody on Zoom. Of course, uh, you don't know where you are, half of the class uh, in Europe, half of the class in uh, Western Ukraine, and uh, you are not uh, safety to go to school and uh, take the lessons. So it will be a, play, a safe place where uh, kids can learn and then make a pilot, make some uh, lessons in a uh, Shomer Tzair style, in a Shomer Tzair way. Uh, it will be uh, what we can do, informal pedagogica, uh, some uh, uh, master classes, uh, so uh, arts, crafts, uh, some, um, about emotional intellect, what, what I said. It's what we, uh, the, the best one we can do. It's a form of pedagogic with the uh, children, with the uh, teenagers uh, in a shamaric values. Uh, so uh, a lot of our Hanikims uh, that live in Kharkov come back. Uh, there and uh, they need their activities and want to do every, uh, everybody together. Uh, and uh, I think it's a point uh, that is missed now in uh, uh, Kharkov, in Ukraine, in in all this war. Uh, this project, uh, we have uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, the, uh, uh, the mayor of uh, Kharkov says that you're so good, let's do it, we will support you, what you need, ask uh, us, so they, it was a great pleasure that uh, uh, Shimon are wanted to help to Kharkov. And the second uh, type of our project, it will be on the same place. Uh, it's a project for adults. Uh, it will be a course and a place for guys who want to change uh, their city, uh, want to change their community, want to change their area in a way that, that it will be comfortable to live. Uh, half on a, uh, Kharkov now it's ruined, but uh, we I think it's better uh, to think that this is not a disaster. Maybe this is an opportunity uh, to build something new, something better, something more comfortable for people, something what they will be proud that, OK, Kharkov is the best city in the world that it ever, ever been. And uh, uh, we have experience in Israel how to make these uh, communities, uh, to change uh, their area to, in a better way and so we want to uh, make a course to teach people to make them tools how it works how to build a community uh, how you need to work together how it works and uh, and do it and do it uh, with their uh, use their experience use their and understandable understandable and, uh, Sorry. Uh, about the city and uh, it will be a place uh, for children, for teenagers, for uh, adults uh, that together we will make it with Kharkov. Um, I'm, I'm so excited hearing about uh, just just again um, the vision of it and I that's that's wonderful so that the mayor of Kharkiv uh, that you guys were in contact with him and that he that he was on board with it. Um, we also we already have a building chosen out for um, for where we want the children's center to be in the youth center, um, which, as Anna said, will also be uh, we want to create it as kind of an activist space where people can create projects and we can empower different members of Kharkiv and leaders in Kharkiv to, to create projects to rebuild the city. Um, so if again, if you would um, like to please. Uh, um, please consider supporting our work. I'm sending the donation link here in um, in the chat. It's the most direct way to help. And um, if you can share it with friends and family as well, um, that is, it is huge, huge support. Um, I do want to open up in these last five minutes. And I think if there's anyone else who wants to stay afterwards, I'm I'm okay with that. If, if that's okay with Anna and, um, and Ron, um, that, that we can stay on after for anyone who we don't get to their Q&A now. Um, but I did. I did just want to open up quickly to the Q and A. I'm for some reason I'm not able to um, access it myself. My my computer is being a little funny. So if um if either Ron or Dinesh would want to read out some of the questions in the Q and A, um, I I saw here a question: Is there regular contact with Hashomer it's a year in Israel from Dove from Dove in Montreal? Um. So the question if is there regular contact with the Shomerites here in Israel? That the answer is definitely yes. Um, uh, Anna Anna herself is living in Israel and she's part of a Shomerites here Olami from Israel. But um, for example, I uh, the delegation I was with in um, the refugee camp in Poland was primarily Shomerim and Shomer from uh, uh, from Israel. It was a lot of different volunteers from Israel, and we're in constant contact with our um, our Kinim and our movement um, from there. Um, I saw a question before that I, um, it seemed uh, was was already answered about kind of the aim of a Um I, I think that uh, the, the aim is both, there's a lot of education still about Israel and about our connection to Israel. Um, and there are different Shomrim that um, do make Aliyah to Israel, especially recently, there have been people who have moved to Israel a lot from, from Ukraine during this time. But um, I think also in in a greater sense that there's a lot of folks that ha that aren't moving to Israel. And just like in our Kinim, our chapters around the world, the goal is very much um, still to create a space of Jewish um, Jewish youth and youth empowerment where um, where youth are able to, to take responsibility for their society and for the, um, for the communities around them. Um, 
there was a question here from uh, for Ukrainian Jews living in Kharkiv who identify as Russian speakers. Um, have attitudes and sense of identity changed since the Russian invasion? Um, uh, <laughs> I want to say that uh, uh, a lot of people in uh, Kharkov and all this area started not to talk uh, on Russian. Uh, they start, uh, they moved to Ukrainian and also uh, we have uh, Zooms uh, with our Hanehim, so far can, and it was in Ukrainian. So sort of that, that greater identity with specifically speaking the Ukrainian language and um, which, which makes a lot of sense during that time. And, um, oh, uh, Laura said that donation link does not have an option specifically to donate to the projects in Ukraine. If he doesn't get wherever is most um, needed, is that the best option? Yeah, we are, um, all of our efforts now will be going towards the, the anything that's that's donated through this one will be going towards the, the effort um, right now to re, uh, to create a children's center within Kharkiv. That's where our main effort is now. So, so previously, our main efforts were in the children's center in Poland, um, in the refugee center there, and in sending humanitarian aid. And now, because of the nature of the war and where our efforts are shifting, uh, the, the main efforts will be, um, all, all the donations will be going towards um, creating this uh, youth center in, um, in Kharkiv, in Ukraine. Um, OK. Um, could you comment on the question of anti-Semitism in Ukraine and the Russian claims about um, Nazism being there? Um, what, what exactly was the question about anti-Semitism in Ukraine? Or what, was it, is it just generally whether there, there has been a spike in anti-Semitism in Ukraine or, or, is it, or is it about kind of the Russian claims that they've used to justify the invasion um, that that there are Nazis there. I think that was. I said of the clan. I think I can command. Uh, so I, it's uh, a speech of Russian propaganda that said that in Ukraine why there is a war because they want to uh, find some Nazis, Ukrainian Nazis that nobody seen it. And uh, I remind you that uh, the president of Ukraine is a Jew about what kind of anti-Semitism global we can talking about. No, it can be local, but, but not such a um, And from, from uh, we have a question here, what values as a Shemeritzi are teaching now that the Kibbutzim are no longer communal societies? Um, and as a Shemeritzi work to inform the youth about Jewish values that come from Torah, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I think that a Shemeritzi, I guess this is a larger question about the movement, but I think that um, we, there's obviously changes in time, uh, over time of, of our relationship. I think that um, maybe one day where the absolute end all and be all of the movement was Aliyah, I think Aliyah is still an important part of, of the movement, but it's, there's a bigger understanding that there's also a lot of Jews that are going to stay within their own communities, and we work to um, empower Jewish youth within their communities. Um, and there was, uh, and, and I think that in, in regards to Jewish values, Ju Judaism actually became a, one of the three pillars of Hashem Eretz Um It used to be Echbar Amim, but it became Judaism in the last uh, decade and a half. And it's a much more central part of our movement, um, embracing our secular, uh, humanistic Jewish, uh, Jewish values. Um, I have a question here, is Hashem helping people immigrate to Israel right now? Um, Anna, I think you can uh, speak to that. Um, whether Hashem is helping people immigrate to Israel. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, we work uh, with uh, Natif and Sapnun so that uh, uh, help people to immigrate because uh, uh, we, uh, if they have some documents uh, uh, or uh, need some documents, of course, we help to receive it. Uh, but uh, uh, if you know that uh, a lot of our Hanikims, they're the first generation, so they have no opportunity to make Aliyah. As uh, if they have the opportunity, we help them. Uh, uh, first of all, it uh, need to be uh, documents and a visit of a council. So there were a council near border of Lviv and uh, Poland. 
so the visitor who can wanted it, they did it but uh, for a lot of our hanehims they have no opportunity by law um okay well i think that was the um I think that was the final final question that we had. Thank you, thank you, Anna, and thank you so much, um, Vitaly, and thank thank you to everyone who joined. I'll just remind um, again: if you would like to support our efforts, um, uh, please consider uh, supporting through our donation link, um, which I uh, I'll put again in the chat. Um, thank you so so much for joining us. Um, I think that we, despite how difficult and um, there's so many, so many difficult things that are happening in this war, and it's one of the most brutal wars that our war world has ever seen. Um, but within all of that, I think there are spaces for us to resist and to create um, a better world and to create hope together, especially as youth, especially as young people. Um, and uh, I... I thank you all for for being interested in um, during this time and um, and not not being indifferent to, to that. Um, so thank you thank you all again so much. Um, and I think that will conclude. And Ron, did you um, want to just say one last thing to end? Or yeah, I was going to wrap things up. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, Vitaly and Anna and Ori. Um, it was really fascinating. Thanks to everyone who joined us. Um, thanks to Partners for Progressive Israel staff for helping make it happen. Uh, again, for those who missed the very beginning, a couple of programming notes, uh, market calendars, Partners for Progressive Israel's um, annual Israel-Palestine symposium will be taking place online starting October 23rd over a course of seven Sundays running till December 18. And on September 29, uh, for those who are interested in the topic of confederation, we'll be hosting representatives of a land for all and the Holy Land Confederation and comparing and contrasting their different viewpoints regarding how confederation between Israel and Palestine um, might work. Last but not least, um, as you know, today's program has been free, uh, but generous contributions are what enable them um, to be free and at no cost. So please visit progressiveisrael.org. And if you're able, in addition to donating to, um, to Hashem Metzir's Yachad for Ukraine, please make a donation. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you all. Um, stay informed and Chazak Vemats. Chazak Vemats. Thank you so much, Ron, and thank you. Uh, thank you again to, to the organization. Thank you all.